Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1985 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Cleveland Indians and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for the Indians today is Len Barker, whose record is 2-1 with a 3.08 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers is Jeff Robinson, whose record is 3-0 with a 0.79 ERA. Okay, well, look, I think it's safe to say that if I was a real-life general manager, I would have been fired by now. Uh, we've taken the Tigers in the five years that we've completed uh, to the playoffs twice, uh, once going to the World Series and losing in a Game 7, which was just last year in the 84 season. So it's not like this team has not had success but right now, our current failures, I feel like, can be blamed not just on Baseball Mogul as a shitty ball game, um, but also on my terrible job as being a general manager. And there's really been two factors, I think you'll agree, that one is I've been reluctant to get rid of aging Detroit Tigers players because I like them so much, uh, you know, especially from my childhood. A lot of these guys were heroes to me. And so it's been very difficult for me to let them go, even though everything about them is screaming, we're no good anymore. And so, you know, I've got rid of Alan Trammell this year. We got rid of Lance Paris, Parrish uh, last year. We got rid of Chet Lemon. Uh, I mean, we've had uh, Jack Morris and a bunch of other Tigers. Um, all the way to the point now where they almost don't even resemble, resemble the Detroit Tigers. But beyond that, the other problem is I've done a very bad job, I think by and large, uh, in the trade market. Um, I've made a couple gambles that I was hoping would pay off. But because the rating system in this game doesn't really you know, factor into a player's success or failure, it's been pretty damn impossible to actually pinpoint a player who might be able to help us. And so, for example, a player that I did a good job in the trade, just by stupid dumb luck, was trading for uh, Terry Kennedy, who has a 73 rating, so seven points below league average, which is an 80, and yet the guy's practically a team MVP, uh, batting over 300 last year and winning a gold glove. This year he's batting well over 300. Uh, but then we failed with other trades, like uh, for Chet Lemon, for example, we traded for, and Kenny Smith, who had just hit 28 home runs uh, before we traded for him. I mean, the, the list goes on and on as far as pitchers go. We've just, Burt Blylevin, you know, never worked out always injured um, so when you are trying to make sense of what a roster should look like based on the parameters that the game gives you um, you make the deals based on the only thing that you can which is the data that's in front of you it's not like i'm not spending our money well um, we are the fifth ranked team in building our farm system. We're the fifth ranked team in scouting and we're the fourth ranked team in our medical staff. So why are our players not developing? Why are our scouts and our coaches not able to give us good information? Why is it that our medical staff has not prevented our players from getting completely destroyed through injuries? Why is it that a player, we, as we look at our roster, why is it that a player of Willie Wilson's caliber, um, not even at 30 years old, is below average with a 92 speed and yet is barely stealing bases at a 50% level? You know, what good is that? I don't know. What, what, why... Why wouldn't I just take Willie Wilson and stick him at third base? He has a 59 rating, but 
how do I know he's not going to, he, you know, he might very well not c commit an error, you know? So, like, I, I just don't understand how uh, to succeed in this game with the team that we have. So my point is leading to yesterday's ball game in which we lost 10 to 8, and it was over before it ever started. Like most of the games, it's very clear when the Tigers are going to lose. And it's not transparent at all when we're going to win. I, I always feel like we, even when we do win, I can't even enjoy it uh, because it always feels like a loss. I'm at the impending doom of like one intentional baseball mogul play, like a balk or an error, uh, three walks in a row, a wild pitch to score, the go-ahead run. You know, so I'm not getting much enjoyment out of what we are as a team right now. So I made some roster moves yesterday because, like, why not? Like, what do we have to lose? This is the last season that we'll be doing this sim. So why not try to make something work long term? So one of the things I did is I pulled off a trade yesterday where I s packed up Ken Smith's belongings, threw him out the door into the front yard, and he is on his way to Minnesota. Uh, the guy was batting 140 after he batted, what, he had 39 home runs between Atlanta and Toronto in 83. We traded for him. He hit 23 home runs. I think he hit 20 of them in the first half, and then he hit three the rest of the way. He's got none this year. Um, the only thing he does is take a walk. And the game is pretty much said, even with the rating – the decreasing rating that he has, he has no longer any value in this sim. And so I have to recognize that, right? If the game is telling you the player is no good, why would you keep him? So we traded him at his 78 rating to Minnesota. And it's not like we're going to get back a future Hall of Famer in response. Um, and I, I added uh, newly acquired Dwayne Murphy, who got into two games. He was total shit. And we sent him back to Minnesota, which was the team he was on last year. So good for him. And he's on the Major League roster, so that's even better. Uh, and in return, we basically got Jim Eisenreich to play right field. Kevin Bass is not working out. We saw that uh, Dwayne Murphy's not working out. So Jim Eisenreich, who is rated a 76, has many, has four out of five offensive categories in which he is over league average. That has to be good, right? Despite having a below average overall average? Why? I don't know. But he's a left-handed bat. He's okay defensively. And he's shown in all the seasons that he's played so far, r roughly 800 at-bats, that he, we can at least expect him to bat around 266 because you're looking at what he's done here. Okay. Give me some consistency so I know how to proceed. And so Jim Eisenreich might do that. Uh, in re return, we also got uh, Tim Tuffle, who's in uh, AAA. And he, may, uh, he might take over for Lou Whitaker at second base, the way Whitaker's going. And then a um, fourth or fifth tier uh, catcher. Who cares? So I made that one specific trade to try to do something to help our team. In addition, uh, we called up Mike Pagliarulo, and, I mean, I didn't really want to. I mean, what could he really offer us other than the ability to hit some home runs, which we should be doing, especially at home, especially left-handed bats. There's a 58% more likely chance that a left-handed bat would hit a home run in Tiger Stadium, and yet we have not really performed like that. Uh, only Gibson with the home run power, and yet he's batting under 200. Lou Whitaker, the game is telling us, Lou Whitaker is done. He got injured last year. He barely could get any hits, uh, even when he did play, and now he's got a 400 <laughs> OPS. Okay, so Whitaker's done. Um, and I, I'll have to get rid of him. 
I go, what's the point of keeping him? So Jeff Stone is going to be our DH from now on, and he's going to bat clean up because he's a left-handed bat with a 90 power. He's not going to hit a lot of doubles, apparently, but maybe he's going to hit some home runs, and he's got speed. Um, but so what? Like, this, What does the speed matter? Willie Wilson, one of the most prolific base stealers of this era, not named Ricky Henderson or Vince Coleman, uh, you know, is no longer able to steal at age 29. Why? I don't get it. Um, so there's just no way to know if anything that we have done at this point is to improve the team. But the one thing I can tell you is we've got nothing in AAA, nothing in AA other than Mike McFarlane, uh, maybe Ricky Jordan, but he can't really play defense. And in single A, we have Matt Williams uh, and Chris Hoyle, Sandy Alomar. We've got two good catchers, maybe Jeff Conine. So in single A, we're fine, but we're spending all that money on our minor league system, and none of these guys are improving to the point where we could actually use them. So I, I don't know. Then uh, let's look at the pitchers, and we'll get started with the game here momentarily. I mean, why not call up Danny Jackson? Let's just do it. This is going to be our rotation the rest of the year unless someone gets injured. I reconfigured our rotation. Jeff Robinson, it was his turn anyway to start today. So he's going to be the number one starter. Um, and then Petrie will go tomorrow. We got a day off. That will clear everything up for the rest of the rotation. And we're just going to go with these five guys. Let's see what Dan David Cohn can do. Let's see what Danny Jackson can do. Dave Rosema, I tried to trade him. This guy's got a no trade clause. He won't approve a trade to any team. So we are on the hook for all this big money. And all we can do is hopefully keep him in the bullpen where maybe he can offer us something. And then he's done. Bye-bye. Uh, so Dave Gumpert is the guy that got uh, kicked to AAA. And um, yeah, so there we go. So all I can say right now is... This is what we're going to try to win with. We're going to try to win, uh, even against, you know, whatever the game sets up for us. Um, we probably should trade Lou Whitaker, which will break my heart, but we've got to do that. We might even have to trade Kurt Gibson. I mean, that would be hit for the original Tigers. No, Marty Castillo's still hanging in there. So we can continue to have a Marty party. Uh, and Barbara Garbay. <laughs> Um, wow, that's pretty bad. Okay, so I, I, I'm, I spent all this time because I wanted to try to explain, one, why I'm frustrated, which I think you understand, two, why I think we're failing, which is partially my fault, and three, the game plan that we have to try to get this year under control and maybe make it into the playoffs where we'll probably just get swept anyway. So... Um, okay, let's go ahead and get today's game started. Thanks for uh, tuning in, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. If you have not yet done it, I have done. I did three sports card videos this week, um, all of varying success. I recommend checking them out. If you get a chance, go to the baseball, uh, Brainiac Baseball uh, YouTube page and look at our playlist. You'll see those new videos. So here's Jeff Robinson. Uh, Dave Rosema will not be available for three days so um, because of his start. We can't send him to the minors, so we're only going to be able to have three righties in the bullpen. That really ought to be enough. Okay, and then here's our lineup versus Len Barker, who's a right-hander. Uh, we're pretty left-handed heavy in our lineup. I don't really like that much, but, I mean, what am I going to do? Am I not going to start Lou Whitaker? We have no other options other than Tim Tuffle. And right now, I'd rather have Lou Whitaker. Whitaker. Let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Cleveland Indians. Looked like the same lineup as yesterday. Batting leadoff, played shortstop, is Tony Fernandez. Batting second at first base is Carl Pagel. Batting third and catching is Mike Stanley. Batting cleanup and DHing is Corey Snyder. Batting fifth in left field is Mike Young. Batting sixth in right field is Vaughn Hayes. Batting seventh at third base is Chuck Jackson. 
Batting eighth at second base is Juan Bonilla. And batting ninth is the center fielder, Dave Gallagher. Okay, Jeff Robinson may be our only true success story this year. We've taken him from the number five spot in the rotation, moved him to number four, and now he's jumped all the way to the number one spot. We'll see how that treats him. He is making his fifth start. He's 3-0 with an 0.79 ERA, only nine strikeouts in 22 and two-thirds innings pitched. Opponents are batting 200 against him. Fastball topping out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage at 49%. His best pitch is the splitter, rated an 87, and a fastball rated an 82. Overall rated an 84. The 23-year-old right-hander is arbitration eligible at the end of the 87 season. Look at his log. He faced Cleveland back on April 17th and got the win, going five and a third, giving up one run. It was uh, unearned. A couple of hits, a couple of walks. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Let's take a look at our defense. I mean, we're still over league average in every position, in theory. Uh, Jim Eisenreich out there with an 83. Not a great arm. Um, he's, uh, I think he's a solid defender. At this point, I feel like it doesn't really much matter. Um, Rusty Tillman's going to play first, I think, at this point. So Rusty with an 83 at first. Uh, everybody else is sound behind the plate is uh, TK. Here we go, Tony Fernandez. Leading off versus Jeff Robinson. Hey, line drive to center field. There's one out. Next man up is Carl Pagel. Dominating with a 352 batting in. And Robinson blows it by him. 89 mile an hour fastball. That would, that would get so crushed nowadays. And Mike Stanley. He had a good game yesterday. Two home runs. Grounds out to Whitaker. He makes the play. Okay, we go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at this lineup of crumb bums. Batting leadoff in center field is Willie O. Wilson. Batting second. At shortstop is Barry Larkin. Batting third at third base is George Brett. Batting cleanup and DHing is Jeff Stone. Batting fifth and catching is Terry Kennedy. Batting sixth at first base is Rusty Tillman. Batting seventh in left field is Kirk Gibson. Batting eighth is the newly acquired Jim Eisenreich. And batting ninth is the second baseman, Lou Whitaker. I can't call him Sweet Lou anymore. Because he stanks. Here's Len Barker. We talked about him in his first start against us. And he is making his fourth start of the year. He's looking pretty good. 2-1 with a 3 8 ERA. More walks and strikeouts. Um, 11 strikeouts and 26 in the third innings pitch. Opponents are batting under 200 against him. That's insane. He does have a complete game. Fastball tops out at 94 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 43.1%. His best pitch is the hard curve, rated an 87. Overall rated a 75. A 29-year-old righty is under contract through the 87 season. How did he do against us? Oh, yeah, he lost. He went eight and two-thirds, giving up three runs on seven hits. Did not walk anybody after walking 11. That... Tells you everything you need to know about baseball mogul. Uh, he did get six strikeouts, but he took a loss. Okay. Take a look at the defense for the Indians. They're not good, especially on the corners. Up the middle, they're just above league average. Outfield is apparently good enough to throw five batters out in one game. That makes sense. Good job, game. Behind the plate, Stanley. Uh, terrible defensively, and yet he throws out every time we try to run on him, so I don't even know anymore. Willie Wilson will continue to lead off for us, even though we just cannot steal with him anymore. The two things we can no longer do, we can't steal, and we can't go for the extra base. 
the game has just taken that away from us. Wilson pops up. Barry Larkin had a big game yesterday. He had four hits as he grounds out to third. Two quick outs, and George Brett is like, somebody get me out of town. And after all the different things we've done, we still go out one, two, three. Top of the second, and Corey Snyder leading off part of Team USA in the 84 Olympics. Snyder strikes out, one down. Second K for Robinson. Mike Young grounding out to Lou. Two outs, and really probably the best hitter on the team, Vaughn Hayes. Disrespected by this game. Batting 190, three home runs. And he pops it up on the infield. Tillman calling for it. Maybe that's a better play for Whitaker. We go to the bottom of the second, and Jeff Stone getting his first at-bat of the season. I mean, this guy's going to be our DH, whether he bats 110. I don't care. This is a guy that should hit 30 home runs the rest of the way with a, as being a left-handed bat in this stadium. He does get a base hit. That's a good start. We'll let TK swing away. Kennedy batting 338 with three home runs. Popping it up. Play made by the first baseman, Carl Pagel. Okay, we're going to hit and run with a rusty trombone. And a basic right. It's all the schlubs. It's, all, it's never the guys that are the regular starters. It's all the schlubby schlubbersons. First and third. Now, we could do a couple of things here. We could try to go on contact. We could try for a sack fly. None of this even means anything. These are just pretty words. Used as camouflage for a shitty game. So we'll just let Gibson swing away. He probably strikes out. Full count. Yeah. The game is already determined that you are not going to score here. First and third, two down, and Jim Eisenreich with an 0-2 count. First at bat as a Tiger. Manages to power it back to the pitcher for out number three. So there's really there's really nothing you can do other than just take your lumps. Chuck Jackson, base hit in the center field. There he goes, stealing second base, then third base, and then home. Ground ball to second, Kennedy go to. Yeah. So, we did not get two, which would have been great. But with Jackson at second, because he was n there, were, there was no double play, it was for a reason. It's because he is about to score. Not with Dave Gallagher, but maybe with the switch hitting Tony Fernandez. Oh, wow. Robinson is dealing. There's a reason why that guy's got a 0.79 ERA. I'm actually kind of believing he might be good. We go to the bottom of the third, and here is Lou Whitaker batting 127 with one home run. The Mendoza line feels like it's so far away to him. One out. Nice pitch from Barker. Striking out Willie Wilson. Two down. And Barry Larkin. Strikes out looking. Len Parker. Resurrected. Pitching like a god. Top of the fourth. Carl Pagel with a ground ball to third. I don't want to jinx it, but George Brett, who was terrible last year defensively. I believe this is only his 11th start at third, he's played first and third and been a DH, has yet to commit an error this year at any of the positions that we've put him at. Mike Stanley with the base hit. Runner on first for Corey Snyder. 1-1 one, one count. There's a ground ball to Brett. Did I jinx him? 
No, oh, a double play around the horn. We go to the bottom of the fourth. And George Brett will lead it off. Into a single. Great. Lead off man is on. We're not hitting and running with Jeff Stone. We didn't bring Jeff Stone up to hit and run. Wow. Back to back infield singles. I mean, this game blows. Nobody out. First and second. Here's your catcher, Terry Kennedy. Pulling it into right field for a single. The bases are loaded. There's no way a run would score on that, right? Base is loaded. Just let Rusty Tillman swing away. Nothing else works anyway. We come back into the pitcher. Is that a double play? Going home first? Yeah, he goes home to get the force. So we will not be scoring here. Despite having the bases loaded and nobody out. Oh, I take it back. Gibson's going to clear the bases. <laughs> Three-run triple for Gibby. Hey, that'd be great if he's off the schneid. He takes back the team lead with 20 RBI. That is his first triple of the year. And it's 3 nothing. Now we will go on contact. Eisenreich can hit a ground ball. We'll get that run in. And he walks Eisenreich. That does set up a double play. That was not intentional. In fact, that was a 10 pitch at bat. Working that walk. Well, we may as well try to hit and run with Lou. Yeah, that'll get a run in. Good job by Whitaker, at least getting the ball into play. Eisenreich goes to second, and it's 4 0 Detroit. And Wilson strikes out for the second time. All right, a comfy lead. 4 nothing. He's still got more than half the game to go. That is Mike Young leading it off. Young with a ground ball to Tillman. Stepping on the bag for out number one. Von Hayes in the hole at second. Whitaker scoops it, makes the play. And Chuck Jackson, one for one today, popping it up. Good job. We go to the bottom of the fifth. And Barry Larkin is up. He's batting 529 versus righties this year. 0 for 2 today for strikeout. After getting four hits yesterday, the game is definitely not going to give him another big game. So now he's 0 for 3. And Brett walks. Second walk issued by Barker. Runner on first. Jeff Stone, let the big dog eat. He's two for two in his debut. And it paid off. Here's Jeff Stone's first home run of the year. Maybe I'm not such a bad general manager after all. Maybe I'm just a little hard on myself. This game sucks. <laughs> all right, Kennedy strikes out for out number two. And a rusty. It's a base hit the right. His second hit of the game. So the Tigers have eight hits and two walks. Here's Gibby. Had the big triple. Slow, very slow roller to second. That'll do it. Okay, we're moving on to the sixth inning. Jeff Robinson at 54 pitches. Juan Bonilla. Hits a ground ball to Barry Larkin, and there's your error. He doesn't give up any runs unless they're unearned, so let's see how the game plays this one. Right there to give Barry another shot, and he gets a double play. Hot and cold. Why not get every ground ball to Barry Larkin? Okay, bottom of the sixth. And Jimmy Eisenreich will lead it off. He's walked today. Otherwise, he is basically like every other right fielder we've had this year. 
Blue with a base hit. Do we want to go for two? No, of course not. We will never steal and never go for a double ever again. It's really Wilson having a tough game. That's a ground ball to first. Interesting that he only steps on the bag. I would think he'd go to second to get that force. And Barry popping it up. Okay, moving on to the seventh inning. This is very Greg Maddox-like today. Into the seventh inning at 61 pitches. And then he walks Pagel. Leadoff man has to get on every inning, otherwise it's not baseball mobile. Mike Stanley lining it to Wilson in center. One out. A tapper back to Robinson. Ooh, spins and gets the runner at second. Keeping the runner out of scoring position, that's always a good idea. Two down from Mike Young. And Young strikes out. Oh no, he's caught stealing. Corey Snyder caught stealing second base. Okay, well, we go to the bottom of the seventh. All in all, a pretty normal ball game so far. As George Brett pops it up. Really, the only abnormality is the error by uh, Barry Larkin. Stone crushes that one to center field. 400 feet, but it is caught. Lark, uh, Len Barker, by the way, officially tired at 117 pitches. Terry Kennedy had ball four in his hands. He swings anyway. And we go to the top of the eighth inning. So Mike Young was at the plate when Corey Snyder was caught stealing, by the way. That was his first attempt. He's one for five in his career. Mike Young strikes out. Five Ks for Jeff Robinson. Make a six. Von Hayes going down on strikes. And Chuck Jackson representing all the Chuck Jacksons. There's a base hit. I don't mind that so much. Runner on first for Bonilla. Ground ball to Lou. Nicely done. Robinson's going to be coming out, going for the complete game shutout as Ramon Romero coming into the ball game, looking for a regular gig in the bullpen. Tuna with a 5.19 ERA, more walks and strikeouts. That ain't going to help you out. And opponents are batting 3.51 against him. He's got a bluey. Fastball tops up 94 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 45.2 percent. His best pitch is the fastball, rated in 92, overall rated in 80. The lefty is arbitration eligible at the end of the 87 season, and he's already tired. He shouldn't even be in the ballgame. And yet here we are. Rusty. Oh, a bleeder into center field. That is the Tigers' 10th hit of the day. Gibby struggling versus left-handers. And Ramon Romero walks it. Okay, Jim Eisenreich against the lefty. He's been batting 277 this season. All with Minnesota. And a soft line drive to first. Okay. First and second. One down. Here's Lou. He's got a hit today. I fly ball to right, Tillman will tag, and go to third. And we will leave it up to Willie Wilson. If you want to have a little bit more breathing room, 1-0 count. Oh, that's going to make us breathe easy. A triple for Willie Wilson. And it's 8-0, second triple of the ball game for the Tigers. 
Wilson had two doubles yesterday, was denied a triple by Dave Gallagher. And Barry Larkin, Hall of Famer, with the base hit. It is nine to nothing. Nope. And George Brett, another base hit. Hey, Ramon Romero, you suck. Larkin safe at third. And the player of the game today, Jeff Stone, three for four with a home run in his season debut. Gets a base hit past the third baseman. Ten to nothing. If it was happening to me, I would be very <laughs> unhappy. But you know what? We maybe we figured something out. Terry Kennedy in the dirt. Could this be an error? And the mongling is officially on. A game that felt like it could be good is not. It's just a, another garbage game by Baseball Mogul. At least it's in our favor. We do score five in the inning. We go to the ninth inning. And Jeff Robinson has a chance to throw a complete game shutout. Dave Gallagher leading it off. Oh, leadoff man gets on. Well, Robinson's been able to keep him from scoring so far today. Good pitch, low and outside. Fernandez popping it up. Yeah. All right. So all these runs that are going to score will be unearned. Is a reason why there's a run differential. Um, we'll bring in Jeff Montgomery. We'll play back. We'll give up a run for a potential double play to give us the shutout. The catcher running. Yeah, it's all it's all unearned. It doesn't matter. Ball on the right. Yeah, so everything went basically to shit after the seventh inning. Wilson, if he catches it, will give us the 11 to 1 victory, handshakes, butt slaps, sloppy stakes. Still can't really be happy with it. Um, the game finds a way to take away any little bit of pleasure you might get from it. As the Tigers win 11-1, to 1, I guess that's a good sign as we take a look at the National League here. Only one team does not have 10 wins. That's the Giants. Atlanta's lost eight in a row. And the Dodgers have won five. We look at the American League. We're still only two and a half out. So we do have a chance to get things right. It's going to depend a lot on that fourth and fifth starter. Um, and there's still four teams in the American League that have not won 10 games. All right, we'll take a look at headline news. Brainiac Baseball, Daily Brie. Ken Oberkfell is going to miss five weeks. Baltimore expands lead with a 4-2 victory. Boston overruns the Yankees 19 to 3. What? I'm just looking it over here. Lloyd had a home run. And Don Slot had a home run. And Pat Dotson had a home run. Okay. Angels defeat the Twins 5 to 2. That's it. Trans nothing other than our trade okay let's pull up the box score and get out of here thanks for watching guys like and or subscribe to the channel uh we will be having a giveaway our first giveaway of the year coming up very soon sooner than you might think so stay tuned for that in order to get in on the giveaway 
you have to be a subscriber. So if you're not just yet, do it. Do it. Jeff Stone. Thank you, Jeff Stone. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. Four hits. Three RBI. First home run of the year. Jeff Robinson. Oh, that should have been unearned. What a jerk. Um, yeah, that was Terry Kennedy who caused that error. That sucks. Terry Kennedy's been really bad behind the plate. The bullpen did what they could do to prevent any more from being scored. Len Barker was humming along for three innings, and then the wheels fell off. Ramon Romero came in and said, Hey, do you need a gasoline on this mound? So, that's it. All right. We're going to come back tomorrow, play the third and final game, and see if we've really got something here. And if not, then... We're going to keep playing anyway until tomorrow, everyone. Have a great day.